Are you smart enough to learn how to code? If this question has been keeping you up at night or preventing you from getting into tech, then this video is for you. So are you smart enough to learn how to code? The quick answer is yes, you are. What you're lacking though is experience. And that lack of experience leads to a lack of confidence. And if you'd like to build your confidence in your coding skills, well, first of all, practice it. And secondly, I have created a set of exercises that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis to build that confidence. I will leave a link to those exercises in the description. So go ahead and download it for free. It's there for you. A lot of times when we doubt our own abilities and ask ourselves questions like this one, am I smart enough to do X? Am I talented enough to do X? Am I good enough? Am I blah, blah, blah enough, you know, to do X? We compare ourselves to others and their journey. And in this particular context, you might be comparing yourself in terms of how quickly you understand certain programming concepts or how far ahead you are in comparison to others who are way further ahead, or it may seem so, right? Or others might look like they're on a different level to you. But the thing that you have to remember is that they're on a different journey than you. The first thing that you have to stop doing, if you're asking yourself this question right now, is stop comparing yourself to others. They are on a different journey. They're on a different timeline. They have a different experience, skill set, interests, talents, and all that stuff. They are a different person with a different learning style. We are all different. You know, there's no one size fits all when it comes to learning, and especially with something as abstract as programming. You are unique, uniquely wonderful, uniquely talented, uniquely skilled. You have a unique experience interests, etc., etc. You bring a unique perspective to the table and tech will benefit infinitely from you joining the industry. However, you do need to put in some work and put in some effort to get there, to build up your skills. It doesn't happen overnight. And yes, you might have a different learning style than your friend or whoever you're comparing yourself to. So stop comparing yourself to others. No one is born a genius at something. It always takes time and effort to build up your skills, to build up your expertise, etc., etc. Malcolm Gladwell in his book Outliers talks about it and he demonstrates how a lot of the times the people who seem outstanding, the outliers, uh, outstanding at something, they were just lucky. They were in the right circumstances to practice early on. For example, Bill Gates right? He had a unique advantage over his peers because he had a unique access to a computer when he was a teenager and he was, he was really interested in programming. So he spent hours and hours and hours practicing programming. Malcolm Gladwell talks about the 10,000 hour rule, which basically means that if you've practiced something for 10,000 um, hours, then you are very proficient in that thing and you really stand out because you are an expert. Well, Bill Gates had those 10,000 hours in his pocket before he started Microsoft. So that's why he really stood out from the crowd. He had a unique access, a unique circumstance. And I'm sure you can see that pattern happening with many role models that you can find in any industry. And in fact, Malcolm Gladwell provides more examples of those outliers in his book, Outliers. Um, so if you want to learn more, I highly recommend it. It's so motivating and really sets you up to work hard because that's what success takes. Learning to code will require that hard work. It is a challenge and it is a constant challenge. Even once you learn the basics or the foundations or when you're proficient enough to start working in the field, there's always going to be more stuff to learn because technology is always moving forward. There are always new frameworks, new technologies, new languages that you can learn to grow your career or to just stay relevant. So get ready for a constant challenge. Get ready for constant growth and learning because when you're a programmer, you're always learning something new or tackling new problems. And a lot of the times that comes with 
that feeling of being lost that you might feel right now, that feeling of a new, like a complete newbie or a complete beginner, because a lot of it will be trial and error and trying to figure things out by yourself and really understanding how things work because there's always, there's just always so much to learn. So get used to that beginner's mindset. Don't let it overwhelm you. Get comfortable with it. Understand that this industry is dynamic and you will always have new things to learn. And that beginner's mindset is what a lot of people in the industry who are pretty senior feel on a day-to-day -day basis because there's always new problems to tackle. And otherwise, you know, there would be no progress, right? We have to move forward and to move forward, we have to learn new things, we have to develop. And it's all about that beginner's mindset because at some point, you will be tackling a problem that you've never seen before and you have to figure it out. So yes, get used to that beginner's mindset. And another thing that I wanted to do is to explore learning styles that work for you. Like I said before, everybody is different and everybody has a different learning style. For example, I have a visual learning style and a learn by doing kind of style. So I need explanations that fit my style um, and I need tutorials that help me understand that fit my learning style, if that makes sense. So figure out what works for you. Explore different resources. You might learn best when you're reading things or you might learn best from videos or you might learn best when you're, I don't know, during, during tutorials or there is an explanation that works for you better than other. The thing is, whatever learning materials you have, go outside of them. It's like with university. A lot of the times um, when I didn't understand, I studied economics and when I didn't understand the principles that were presented to me because it was just dry text with lots of formulas and all that stuff, I would search the internet to find an explanation that will help me understand it because there's so many different ways in which we can explain the same thing. And it's, it's just a matter of putting in the effort, searching for it and making sure that you get it. And also not beating yourself up if it doesn't click immediately. There's so many programmers that say that, I don't know, uh, for loops were very hard for them or they didn't understand while loops. I don't know why I'm on a loop loop, <laughs> but you know what I mean? There's so many people that it, it took them time to understand these concepts and they are abstract. So it will take you time um, and different time than other people. So yeah, don't compare yourself and understand your learning style so that you can, your goal is to understand this thing. It's not a race. You are just, you're trying to understand these things for yourself. So do the work, figure out what works for you in terms of learning. And finally, adopt a growth mindset. A growth mindset is believing that your abilities and your skills are not fixed and that with when you invest the time and effort, you can expand them. So for example, when you practice coding, when you put in the time, you get better and it's not a fixed thing. It's not like uh, your intelligence when it comes to programming is fixed. The opposite of growth mindset is a fixed mindset, believing that your skills and abilities are fixed and you know, there's nothing you can do about it. This, this is your ceiling, right? And while we can believe that we have a growth mindset overall, sometimes we can have fixed mindset when it comes to, you know, different things in life, right? So for example, your programming skills or your intelligence or your musical skills or your athletic skills, or you see what I mean? We can have different mindsets when it comes to different aspects of our life. So make sure that you try to adopt a growth mindset when it comes to everything. Of course, it's gonna take some time, but well, we're talking about programming here, right? So let's start with programming. Adopt a growth mindset when it comes to programming. To illustrate why it's so important to have a growth mindset, let's compare the two mindsets when it comes to different aspects of our lives. So when it comes to challenges, a fixed mindset avoids challenges at all costs because for fixed mindsets, it's a binary situation. You're either talented or you're not talented, right? It's a 
zero or one, or you know, the other way around. I don't remember why I put which, but it is a binary situation. And so of course you don't want to, you're scared of proving yourself not talented. So you want to avoid challenges. You want to avoid proving yourself not to be worthy or whatever. A growth mindset, on the other hand, welcomes challenges because it sees challenges as an opportunity to learn and to develop your skills further, which is an amazing quality. When it comes to obstacles, a person with a fixed mindset would give up very easily on the obstacles because again, it's either they're talented enough or smart enough or not. While a person with a growth mindset persists and sees obstacles as a challenge and as a, an opportunity to grow. When it comes to failure, a person with a fixed mindset sees failure as a verdict and a person with a growth mindset sees failure as a learning because you already tried something, you've learned something, so you're actually closer to understanding the concept or getting to your goal because you've already tried something, you've learned something, right? It's all about improving yourself. So yeah, effort. A person with a fixed mindset sees effort as fruitless. Basically something that doesn't return anything because you're, if you're skilled, you should get it like this. And a person with a growth mindset sees effort as a path to mastery. Criticism or feedback. A person with a fixed mindset, of course, you probably guessed it, avoids it and ignores it. While a person with a growth mindset will take it in and will learn from it. And finally, the success of others. A person with a fixed mindset is threatened by the success of others. They have a scarcity view of the world. If one person is successful, I can't be successful. So, you know, like it's either me or them. And people with a growth mindset are inspired by the success of others. They cheer each other on and they create this supportive community for others. As you can see, a growth mindset will benefit you infinitely, especially when it comes to learning how to code, but also when it comes to other aspects in life, because yeah, you want to make sure that you're growing at all times and become a ver better version of yourself. Compare yourself to yourself a year ago or yourself five years ago and strive to be better in a year or in five years or whatever units of time that you want to set for yourself. The good news is that it's possible to have a growth mindset and to change your mindset from fixed to growth. What you need to do, according to Carol Dweck, who wrote an amazing book called Mindset, which inspired me actually to create this video and which I highly recommend for you if you're asking yourself that question, if you're smart enough to learn how to code, Mindset by Car Carol Dweck. I will leave a link to it in the description as well. So the steps that she recommends to take when it comes to cultivating a growth mindset are so step number one is recognizing and accepting that you have both fixed and growth mindset. And you know, maybe you writing down which aspects of your life do you have a growth mindset in and which aspects in your life do you have a fixed mindset in? Then understanding the triggers for the fixed mindset. What triggers it? Is it deadlines? Is it stress? Is it criticism? Is it failure? What is it? Notice the patterns, what triggers that fixed mindset. Once you understand the patterns and what triggers it, create a persona for your fixed mindset. It sounds a little silly, but it's, it kind of makes that concept that's, I guess, internal, a third person concept, if that makes sense. Um, name that persona, um, visualize that persona, what does that persona behave like? What does it make us think and do? And how does it affect others? And whenever your fixed mindset is triggered, visualize that persona and tell them to go away. Or at least, you know, try to minimize their effect on you. And little by little, this will help you have a growth mindset in that area as well. As long as you kind of distance yourself from it, as long as you understand that it doesn't have to be part of you. And really, whenever you catch yourself, you know, having that fixed mindset self-talk internally, 
remember that you are on a growth journey. And I have some affirmations that you can also repeat, uh, which I will leave a link to in the description. Repeat them whenever you feel like you have, you've been triggered into a fixed mindset. So just to reiterate, in the description, you will find a link to uh, some exercises that you can do daily to build your confidence when learning how to code and also affirmations for getting yourself out of a fixed mindset and focusing on your growth and your journey. Because remember, this is your journey. Focus on it and focus on your learning. Don't compare yourself to others. This is you. Find what works for you and adopt a growth mindset because it is life-changing. Seriously, it is life-changing, especially if self-doubt is eating your way from within. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments, if you've heard about the different mindsets, and also share what works with you when it comes to learning how to code because everybody, like I said, has a different learning style and it's super interesting to see what works for you. Like this video if you've enjoyed it and share it with a friend who is learning how to code and might be prone to self-doubt. Don't forget to remind them how unique and amazing they are. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, and you can also find me on other social media as Coding Blonde. Have a wonderful time today you're currently experiencing. Bye.